Good morning, everybody. Thanks for stopping in to Dave's Acrylic Pouring. Today, I am going to be mixing up some chameleon uh, pigment powder. Now, don't be confused. This is not like this mica powder. Uh, this pigment powder will actually um, tint your paint color for uh, most of in most cases. Um, this mica powder here. This is going to add like a uh, very fine glitter kind of to your paint to give it a little bit of a shimmer. Okay, now this one that I'm doing today is chameleon pigment powder. So from what, I'm, uh, what I've done before is that when I've used this is it actually goes into your paint and it doesn't actually change the color immediately of the paint, but as it dries then you'll get that, that those color variances. Okay. So, I have my medium here, and this medium is a 4 to 1 uh, ratio, and I am using uh, Valspar Ultra High Gloss Paint and Primer Ultra White. This is untinted. Untinted, that is very important, which means they did not put any of the white in there. It's just whitish in color, and it's just the base. And the one part is Minwax Polycrylic. Uh, clear gloss protective finish. Now this is a water-based, uh, so it's uh, water-based cleanup, real easy. And that's what I've got here. That's what my pouring medium is for my pigment powders. Okay, so we are going to start off with um, our scale. We're going to put the cup on there and turn it on, which will immediately tear it out to zero. Okay, we are going to go uh, with one ounce of this medium. Come on now. There we go. Oh, 102. Really goes from 99 to 102. That's awesome. <laughs> okay. We're close, so that's all right. Now, we are going to open our pigment powder and this comes in a set and there is multiple colors in here I think that we're going to use this color here to right now but we've got like uh, a light orangish pink um, that's more like a magenta um, this is like an orange, orange green kind of, it's pretty cool, it's like a goldish yellow there's a nice turquoise blue. We already grabbed that one. This one's like a greenish pink, kind of. There's like a copper almost. So yeah, we got plenty of colors in there that we're gonna choose from, but right now we're going to go with this uh, purplish color that's right here. Okay, so I've got about one ounce in there. And what I like about these is that when you take the cap off, you'll notice that it's got a little piece of plastic thing on here with a lid, and you can pop that lid open, and then it's got the little hole in there, a little dispensing hole, which makes it really easy to keep it clean. Now, if you're gonna be mixing up a lot of this mica powder, I would suggest wearing a mask, um, because this is very, very fine powder. Um, so, if you're doing like a resin job or something like that, where you're mixing a whole bunch of mica powder in there, definitely wear a mask, but I'm only using a little bit and it's kind of far away from me, so. All right, we're gonna put about a quarter of a teaspoon, maybe a little less, in here. Okay, you just tap the sides of the, like this. I've got it closed so it's not coming out, but you just tap the sides of the, of the bottle and it just comes right out. All right, so we are going to mix this, and as you can tell, it is staying white. Now, it's got a little bit of a bluish tinge to it, but not a whole lot, as you can see. Now, this is still a little, but let me get in the screen here. This is still a little bit on the thick side. So, we are going to add a little bit 
of water. Let's go to 20 or 0.2. Use a little bit of polycrylic. Where's my other? Here it is. I have to this off. Hold on one second. We're going to add to that a little bit of this polycrylic. this get that milky consistency that watered down milky consistency okay we're breaking this back up here and we're going to add this to thin our color out it's a little better one a little thinner though. I'm making these a little bit thinner than I normally make my paint. I want it a little more fluid. Because <clears throat> I'm going to use these in a Dutch pour and I want these to spread uh, and get them. Uh, I want to maximize my uh, colors that come out when it dries. So I'm making them a little bit thinner. Okay, now um, the last part of this, I cannot stress it enough, every time I do any kind of paint, I always strain my paint before it touches the canvas. I don't want any um, bits and pieces of dried paint to go on there because they'll create lumps on your canvas and you don't want that. Try to get every little bit out of here that I can, but... Alright, let that sit for a second. I like being uh, frugal, I guess. Other people might call me cheap, but uh, I reuse my cups and everything. I don't want to, these are just cheap plastic cups, but still, I mean, why waste them when you don't have to? You can just rinse them out and uh, reuse them. As you can see, I rinsed it out, but there's still white paint on it left over from the last time that I rinsed it. Okay, we're good on that. I know, some people might say, uh, that you're not supposed to rinse paint um, down the sink because it will ruin your plumbing but I can do almost anything in a house including plumbing so if it does clog it I'll just fix it <laughs> so there you go all right so that's our paint right there and we'll set that one off to the side let's, let's do another one one more Or, or zero it out. Go to one ounce again. The only bad part about these chameleon uh, pigments that when I'm doing my actual pour, because they don't actually pigment the uh, white paint here or the uh, the base paint. Um, 
I don't exactly know which colors that I'm using when I grab. I guess I could have uh, labeled them, but where's the fun in that? Okay, let's pick a different color. How about, how about, yeah, let's do that one. Okay, same thing, we're gonna pop that lid open. Maybe. Okay, maybe. <laughs> this one doesn't want to open. Oh, there it goes. Okay. Again, we're doing about a quarter of a teaspoon. Not tablespoon, teaspoon. Doesn't take a whole lot. Again, mix it up. Push that pigment down in the paint as soon as you can and then you can vigorously mix it because if you start just mixing this fast to begin with that powder is going to go up in the air or it can go up in the air and then you'll be like a unicorn and you'll have glitter boogers <laughs> to use our mixture again. If you guys get, if you guys are doing your paintings and you find lumps and stuff after it's dry, um, or little um, bumps or anything like that in there, I know we're all tempted to try to use our fingernail and try to pick that piece off, and that just never works out very well. So this is a preemptive strike, if you will, to make sure that that doesn't happen because you don't want to ruin your, you get a great painting, you don't want to ruin your painting by uh, scraping or picking at your painting. Okay. how we are going to mix our pigments um, and in my next video we'll be using them but I just wanted to get a brief tutorial of how to mix these so that uh, we're all on the same page uh, that way when I do my next video you can always refer back to this to learn exactly how to mix these paints up all right guys thanks for watching uh, stay tuned for the next video have a good day pour on